So, I got a question from Michelle Wagner about this Applied Neuroscience MSc at King's College London Distance Learning. He asks, hey, do you know how hard it is to get into the program? I have a rather bad second class degree. Do I have a chance to be considered? Thanks. First of all, apologies if I got your name wrong. To be fair, most English people would say Michael Wagner, which is probably worse than me if I got it wrong. So there is that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope I said your name right. To answer your question, yes, it's very easy to get onto the program. You don't need good grades. And I'm probably the best possible person to answer this question. Now, what I'm about to say applies to all masters. So I'm going to make this about how I got into this Applied Neuroscience MSc program with bad grades. However, to answer your specific question, yes, you can get in with a bad second class degree because I got in with 38% as my overall grade, which is called a pass degree. But um, because you need 40% to pass, but with my university, if you don't get that in the final year, you will um, get what's called a pass degree where you, it means you finished, but you can't really, I mean, companies will not really take you seriously when you try and get into a role, <laughs> certain companies anyway. So anyway, I'll talk about what I did in my career in another video how I got around that, because that will be an interesting one to those of you that got bad grades in your bachelors. Um, but I'm going to show you my grades. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you that the key is in the personal statement. You give them the grades, and if they're bad, <clears throat> like mine, you kind of acknowledge it in the first few sentences. And I have my personal statement available, um, or it's called a supporting statement, some people say whatever it's called, the the thing you write to them to show them that you are a good candidate. Whatever your country calls it, that thing is available on my website, neuroscienceafterdark.com. If you're watching on YouTube, there'll be a link to that below. That's the kind of essay or letter you'd have to write. Something where you kind of provide knowledge on the subject within the letter itself. So, you can go read that one in a minute. But first, I'm going to show you my grades, how bad they were, to those of you that are watching this to try and find out how to get onto a master's program with terrible grades. So, this is my first year. These are my first year grades. I hope you can see. I'm trying to get it into focus. Anyway, point is... Um... I got, right, oh, University of Birmingham, Civil Engineering, first year I passed everything, but I got terrible grades, uh, I mean, I got 40 here, 40 here, uh, good brain, bad brain, interesting, so I picked a brain biology module in my civil engineering degree because we were allowed to take or we were given one option you know, of a non-engineering module or you could pick an engineering related one if you wanted but i saw good brain bad brain and i said i want to know about that um so you could argue that that laid down the foundations for me being interested in doing this applied neuroscience masters construction design 48 percent Failed properties and applications of materials. Did all right in modeling concepts and tools. Uh, it's all maths. Just about past fluid flow. Electrical systems, 43%. Statics and mechanics, 54%. So overall, not good for the first year. Um, I don't know what the average is, but it's probably below 50%, I suppose. Maybe just above it. I don't know. You can calculate that yourself. Now, second year, this is the interesting year, the most interesting, because I got, 
I just about passed structural engineering. That was the only pass from a module of that year. And it, it was 40%. So literally scraped it. Now, floods and river systems, I got 11%. Soil mechanics, most boring piece of crap in the world, 4%. Uh, construction management, 25%. Construction design, 30%. Properties and applications of materials, which was a reset from the year before, 40%. And then the optional module, material science, ferrous, non-ferrous alloys, 10%. So terrible grade that year that was probably an average of like 20%, maybe even less than that. I don't know. And then, um, the second, I mean, the second time I did, I basically resat them the following year. And um, I got, I mean, I passed everything. However, what's interesting is this construction design module, I got 38%, which is... Uh, and get that into focus just about failing by two marks now the reason why this is nonsense is because the guy that wrote the exam had to specifically write the exam for me he even emailed me in uh the summer holidays to be like um i have to write this for you i'm confirming that you're doing it right and so he walked into the exam hall and you're mixed with a whole bunch of other people doing resets. And he asked the guy at the front, he says, is this guy here? And so he looks over at me and I just kind of give him a nod and a little smile and I don't get anything back. He just stares at me and then walks out. Now, I know I didn't fail that exam. Uh, I feel that he just, you know, said, I'm just going to give this guy a fail. That happened for sure. And it's ironic because, it's not ironic, but what happened in the following year, as we're going to find out in a minute, is the complete opposite. Someone almost gave me sympathy and just gave me two marks more to give me the pass. Nice chat, but he should have just failed me, to be honest, because it didn't deserve good grades. Anyway, following year, structural engineering design, 34%. Structural Engineering Analysis, 18%. Civil Design Project, 42%. That's the one where I know for sure I didn't deserve any more than like 10%, probably, if that. It was such a terribly done project. It was a group project of me and my, me and my housemate were doing it. He failed too, by the way, just so you know. Um, bad combination. And uh, yeah, I did not deserve that. But thank you for caring and giving me some good feelings when you were marking my uh, coursework if you're out there i forget what his name is he's a very he's a train enthusiast it was a, a railway train project actually anyway guided study that was the only essay i've ever done in engineering because i'm good at report writing or i was good at report writing i got 66 percent. that was the best grade i got in the entire thing and then water management 26 percent fail geotech 30 percent fail and then final one optional module 20th century russian novel where i was introduced to dostoevsky for the first time actually interesting because i didn't realize who he was at the time and today i'm learning about him because i'm into psychology and he's such a good writer that many people hail him to be as good as or or a psychologist because of how good his stories are written, how good the uh, characters are built psychologically. So overall, total credits achieved, 290. Overall mark, 38%. So credits are if you've passed a module. So you should have a minimum of, so it's 120 credits per year. Multiply that by three, because it's a three-year course, even though I did it in four years. And you should get 360. That's how you get honours. So you say bachelor's degree, 2-1, honours. Honours means all the credits or something like that. I think you need a minimum amount of past modules or to get... Sorry, a minimum amount of credits to get what's called honours. So I didn't get that. 
But yeah, overall qualification obtained, it says here. B Eng Civil Engineering Pass. It should say something like upper second. Sorry, it should say BN Civil Engineering upper second or or first class or whatever. Um those were are the good grades, um, but I just got pass. So, as I said, you don't need good grades to get into a master's program. You need to think about these people for what they are. They're selling a product. They do have some kind of control, right? They do. They don't take absolute stupid people. And the way to separate yourself from them is by writing a very good personal statement, which applies and shows some knowledge of the field. It doesn't matter if you sound stupid because you're way lower than them. They know more about the field in this particular case, like uh, the field of neuroscience. They just want to see some keenness. They want to see that you can write. They want to see that, well, you can write decent. They want to see that you're enthusiastic about the thing and you can only show the enthusiasm by showing that you know something about something. So, um, like I said, on neurosciencealfterdark.com, you can find my personal statement, link below. I will briefly talk you through what I mean by showing enthusiasm. Um, let me open it here. Applied Neuroscience MSc Application Letter. So I started with, this supporting statement is going to be very uncomfortable, but I'd like you to understand that this is my intention as I intend to impress by util utilizing your visual stimuli to activate neural pathways that lead to activation of your Broca's area, Wernicke's area, and your angular gyrus to trigger the release of cortisol and epinephrine from your amygdala. So do you see what I'm saying? You're using some knowledge, and this is real knowledge, not just something I googled in five minutes. I, I did a course on Coursera, which talked about some of these areas. And so I may have been wrong about releasing cortisol and epinephrine from the amygdala, but generally speaking, I was showing some knowledge of neuroscience and whatever. I went on to say, I will analyze your psyche while I speak to you from the past. I will also attempt to release some dopamine and norepinephrine. And if I'm perfectly honest, this is the most crucial aspect of this statement. Dopamine, norepinephrine, they're like the uh, reward, neuro, reward neurotransmitters in the brain. Well, it's more reward circuits that run on dopamine and norepinephrine rather than the chemicals themselves. But we'll talk about that in a neuroscience video in the future. But I want to get to the bit where I talked about my bad grades because they were so bad they had to be acknowledged in the personal statement. Anyway, here it is. You may have released some dopamine due to my attempt. Sorry, no, right. So. It took me a while. I had to find the bit where I talked and referred to my grades. So sorry for the little blip in the little gap in the video. Later on, I went on to say, speaking of potential failure, I am sure your visual stimuli have processed my transcript in your occipital lobe. After that, I'm sure the visual information was processed in the neurons for comedy. I'm not sure yet of where this area is located in the brain. It is true that I failed miserably, but I have come a long way and have studied psychology and neuroscience intently on YouTube and Coursera. In fact, I'm currently halfway through this course, a 30 week course on Coursera, very good one, by the way, called Medical Neuroscience. I would strongly recommend that to anyone who's about to do this or thinking of doing this module, this uh, MSc. Go study Medical Neuroscience. It will just show you the neuroscience parts and what you gain from there will drastically help you in your uh, Applied Neuroscience MSc. Anyway, I go on to talk about what I've learned 
about this thing, but sticking to the point, speaking of potential failure, I am sure your visual stimuli have processed my transcript, basically saying I'm sure you've seen my bad grades. The transcript, of course, to those that don't know, is the thing with the grades on that we just talked about that I just showed you. After that, I'm sure the visual information was processed in the neurons reserved for comedy. So basically saying, ha ha ha, you probably laughed at my terrible grades. Uh, and then I said, yeah, I don't know where this location is in the brain, the comedy area. It's not a real area. There was no specific comedy area, but you know what I mean? It's a neuroscience joke. Um, then I say it is true that I failed miserably, but I've come a long way. So that's how you do it, right? Try and be original. You don't have to be funny like that. But basically say, these are my grades. I've come a long way from there. I'm 30 now, so I've got life experience. I didn't say that in there, but you can maybe don't use the age. Just say what you gained in your years. Forget about your age. Just say, I've come a long way. This is what I've done. This is my... Even if your work experience isn't relating to this, just talk about the fact that you have some life experience um, in working in this company, doing whatever it is that you do there, but now that's not stimulating you, so you've come here to learn this new subject, which is not related to that. And just the idea that you worked shows them that you've got some experience. Now, to those people, some people might be thinking that, listen, the experience isn't related. Trust me on this. People that have had jobs are smarter on so many levels than people that have not been to work. I can't really explain. This is something you're going to have to learn in life. You're just going to see it. When you have jobs, when you have a job, you've had to pay bills, you've had to do this, you've had to do that. So you understand how things work. You haven't just learned about how depressing bills are. Um... Uh, taxes as well uh, you understand how salaries work not just from what you've seen not just the rational elements you've kind of lived with those things and planned your life and you've had a few um, you know experiences and you've had to balance your social life in with everything so yes even if your experience is in something that isn't really a high level job you've learned so much about life that other people haven't people that haven't gone out into the private sector work um so yeah don't think that your experiences are not worth writing about in this specific personal statement anyway i'm going to be going through this personal statement in another video because Reading it, I said, damn, this is actually quite good. Like, because there was a point where when I made it, wrote it and got in with it, I thought it was very good. Then when I started learning some neuroscience, I looked back at this and I was just concentrating on neuroscience stuff. And I was like, Ugh, I was so dumb. But now I look at it and I'm like, yeah, I understand that I was dumb. You're not really going to be anything amazing in terms of the knowledge that you put, sorry, the knowledge that you put down. However... The attempts are pretty good, and it's a pretty decent, like, there's no ass kissing really. Um, I don't like ass kissing, just so you know. And um, some of it is like, there's a lot of jokes about it, about, you know, neuroscience and about why everyone else is stupid and why I'm... I'm smart, but if you do it in a funny way, it's it, it works for you, as we've seen. Anyway, that video will be coming soon. I'm going to make that one soon. Anyway, um, go check out neuroscienceafterdark.com and tell all your friends. Done.